Hello and welcome to episode 58. Today we are going to be going over the concept of delayed gratification, but I am going to delay the start of this podcast for just one second to make a quick note that if you guys can like, comment, subscribe, leave a review, that really, really helps us out. Truthfully, if it is something that you can just throw us a like, throw us a watch, uh, review it on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, being able to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Those all really help us out and we would appreciate it if you are loving the content to go ahead and do that. So getting back into delayed gratification here, I would like to start with a question and I want you to kind of hold on to the answer as we go through this podcast. And I think it's going to be helpful for you to know what your answer is and then to hear a little bit more about the concept of delayed gratification. So are you willing to exchange short-term comfort for long-term function? Go ahead and keep that tucked away for a little bit, but we're going to get into what delayed gratification is exactly. And it is going to be the resistance to the temptation of immediate pleasure in the hopes of obtaining a valuable and long-lasting reward in the long term. Or more simply put, the ability to wait to get what you want, something that's going to be bigger and better than the thing that is the instant gratification right away. Uh, So a few examples of this, let's say you have an exam coming up, instant gratification would be watching TV or doing an activity that brings you joy in the moment, whereas delayed gratification would be studying for the exam or calling it an early night to get a good night's sleep before you go into the exam and hoping that that delays the long-term gratification of getting a good score on your exam. Another example here is let's say that you're dieting or you have a specific goal within food, then you go to a party and you see food that looks just mm, so irresistible. And so instant gratification would be going ahead and piling your plate high and being able to enjoy those foods um, versus choosing to delay that gratification for the results that you are hoping to achieve within dieting. Absolutely. So, I mean, when we're looking at those different factors, I think that it's important for us to really speak to, like everyone is is familiar with gr- delayed gratification and the, the value in which it brings to your life and those different things. I think that a lot of the best things in life are going to come from when you are able to delay that gratification just that little bit longer to put a greater work into it or something along those lines is a very valuable tool in general. Uh, but the difference between achieving your goals and not coming we're not coming down to your ability is to de- 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 delay that gratification. I think you got, I mean, delaying gratification um, in general here is probably the, the biggest thing that, that changed the trajectory of, trajectory of my life from a academic sense. Because and and that's where it really starts for me and we'll talk more about that i think i think here in a little bit but that's where it really starts with me is is the ability to understand that doing the work that is inevitably going to lead me down the road towards where i want to be doing that work now to get me to where i want to go in, into the future there are a few things that have felt more pure to me and more gratifying to me than utilizing delayed gratification, right? And I, I think that we can get really caught up in a lot of different things and, you know, have a lot of different viewpoints on something like this, especially in sort of the culture that we live in and how easy it is to be distracted. Um, but even down to like the concept of, of doing deep work is insanely gratifying if you've ever done it got into a flow state of any kind done any sort of of deep work um but so to quickly define deep work essentially is like a chunk of time that you're deep into your work you're in a flow state you're you are just flowing with that workflow over the course of one two three four hours if you can string together something like that and it's almost like you've lost track of time Like you look up and you're like, how did, how have I been doing this for four hours? And honestly, there's few things that have felt as good, right? Um, Because when you come out of that, it's really hard to get into it, right? There's so many distractions. There's, there's YouTube, there's Instagram, there's TikTok, there's Netflix, Hulu, um, all of the services nowadays to, to 
grab your attention and, and feed your mind something that is, you know, processed food, sugar, uh, candy, but the to the meat of it, the meat and potatoes, the vegetables, the fruits, you know, the hearty meal that that in, ends up making you feel really good about what you did that day is that deep work. It is that sense of not falling victim to, to what's the most easy in the moment, but you know is going to be the most gratifying at the end of the day or the end of the week or the end of the month. So I think that is, you know, in a nutshell, what, what delayed gratification is, is meant to me in my life. And I know we'll kind of dive into that more here in a little bit. Yeah. And I think it's really important to talk about when it comes to delayed gratification, how instant the life that we live in is now. When we think about it, we can get food delivered. We can find anything on the internet. Social media keeps us connected to absolutely everything. And so we are so used to that instant gratification, um, whether it's posting a picture and getting likes, that's instant. Um, being able to search something on the internet, that's instant. And it's also the factor of when we're looking at food of you can go and get fast food, you can get that food delivered, like I mentioned. Um, and you can also be in this place of when we talk about gratification in general, we need to talk about the concept of impulse control, because it's not always the lack of impulse or the lack of impulse control that makes people have a hard time delaying gratification. Some of it comes from a realistic mindset of being in a spot of thinking, well, if this is here in front of me now, I might as well take it because it might not be there in the future. And that's something that when we look at any kind of study that's been done on delayed gratification, or if you've looked into it a little bit more, people often talk about your ability to have that impulse control. But it's also when you look at life, life doesn't always have the guarantee of that better reward. And so it is something that you could not eat that food at that party and still not lose weight. Or you could be in a space where you study for the exam and you still don't pass the exam. And so I think it is important to bring up that it's not just your lack of impulse control, although that does play into it, but it also can be the fact of it's not guaranteed that something's going to come after, or it's not a perfect scenario of, oh, if I don't eat this brownie 100%, I'm going to lose weight. And so it's also something that you don't have to completely deprive yourself of things to be able to to figure out what life is about or to, um, I mean, even with an enjoying life, you don't want to feel like, oh, I always have to deprive myself. I always have to delay that gratification. But it's really being able to look at there's a balance that you want to be able to find between being able to have restraint and being able to have mindfulness within what you're working towards as well as having that deep work and that hard work in place. Yeah. And I think that uh, many individuals, when we're thinking on delayed gratification is that you may feel alone in the scenario of how fleeting your mind is, where I would tell you that 90% of people are in the same boat as you. They're they're battling through the same thought process of like, I'm on my computer and I could answer these very important emails, or I could take the super simple route, sit back, turn on YouTube and watch some really funny clips. I go through that every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and especially within our work in general, where we're taking notes within a client's check-in and then we're providing feedback, whether that be through a Loom video or that be through a voice memo, it can be challenging to go back and forth between those two things of taking the notes, recording, taking the notes and recording. And so one thing that I have found for myself and, and for the coaches that are listening that you may follow the same way that you engage with your clients is that I take a certain block of time that is going to allow for me to to take notes on the check-ins themselves. So however many I can get done within maybe an hour's time frame of taking notes, that next hour I'm going to thereafter record that those, those check-ins specifically. It may not take me the full hour, but I like to block them or put them together because I found myself in a scenario where maybe I would have a check-in that was pretty um, relaxed and there wasn't a whole lot of, of things to touch on. It was more so just touching base, making sure everything was good. And then maybe I'd have a check-in that was next after that was that was like, 
um, some exercise execution videos, some blood panels to look over. And that one was taking me a massive amount of time. And so what I would find is that after that one, I was like, I need a break. <laughs> I need to go and watch YouTube videos. And it was a very uh, challenging circumstance because I found myself in this scenario where I would just kind of give up or lose focus or fall out of that deep state of focus that we were just, that Austin was just speaking to. So that's one of those things where I have to delay the gratification of getting to enjoy the YouTube videos. I know it's kind of a, a silly analogy, but it is a, a simple one that on a day-to-day -day aspect that many people are running into, especially with the aspect of being at work where it's like, ah, eh, I'm not that busy. I could get on my phone and then all of a sudden you're on your phone for 30 minutes and uh, getting on TikTok and you're scrolling and it's a very draining process. And I feel as though for myself, at least when I'm looking at uh, TikTok or I'm looking at Instagram, just mindlessly, my creativity is just kind of like a very quickly drained battery. If you look at like a diesel truck where you push the gas pedal on that and all of a sudden you're already seeing the gas <laughs> going down. That's how I feel about my creativity when I'm looking at TikTok or Instagram aimlessly. I'm just like very quickly seeing that charge go down. Uh, whereas when I, when I stay off of it, I, that charge stays pretty high and I can be creative. I can be energetic um, more so throughout the day uh, for myself, I see. Yeah. And I think it's also important to talk about the fact that it is an adaptive skill. It's not something you perfectly are like, now from this point on, I listen to this podcast. I'm going to be so great at delayed gratification and my life is going to be freaking stellar. Um, of course, you can start implementing things, but it is adaptive and it is something that you are going to have to learn and practice and get your reps in more than anything, because there are going to be situations where you do have that delayed portion portion and then you don't get the gratification like I talked about and being able to take those instances and keep getting after them to know hey I might need to delay this a little bit more this time frame might look a little bit different but it is something that once you do learn and practice it it's been shown to promote positive social behavior like things like sharing and positive social interaction and it is something that their studies shown that students who delay gratification are better able to complete their assigned activities. There's also a study, and we'll have this linked in the show notes, um, that researchers found the ability to delay gratification is not just important for goal achievement, but it also is going to have an impact on long-term success and overall well-being. So I think when we talk about well-being, it's not just about the concept of let me delay this and I'm going to get more later. And it's always looking at if I do this now, I'll get more later. But looking at the fact of keeping promises to yourself, because when you don't keep promises to yourself, so maybe you say, I'm going going to study for this exam. And then that instant gratification starts creeping in. Those YouTube videos start looking a lot more appealing. It's not just about delaying the gratification. It's about keeping the promise to yourself. Because there are also studies that show that if you keep breaking promises to yourself, if you keep being flaky to yourself, that is not only going to lower your self-belief, it is also going to lower your trust in yourself. And we all know what it's like to lose trust for someone else, like lose trust within a relationship. Think about that happening to yourself time and time again. That can definitely take a toll on you, as well as it is going to lessen your ability to truly achieve things. And so when you think about it that way of it's not just about, oh, I'm going to get better later. It's about what is this going to do to my psyche and to my life quality if I keep breaking promises to myself, and I keep deciding to not show up for myself at the end of each day. By the time your head hits the pillow, what makes you feel like it was a great day, right? And I think to sort of reverse engineer it from there is, is really valuable. And that's something that, you know, I think a lot of us do. And it's something where, you know, for example, at the end of the day, what's sort of going on in your mind? What's what's that feedback loop telling you? Was it, man, you were distracted today. You didn't get much done. You spent three hours on social media. You didn't keep the promises you made to yourself, your colleagues, your clients. Uh, you didn't get that article written you should have. Whatever it is, right? All, all being that you know that if you would have focused in you would have gotten those things done. You would have kept those promises. And by the time your head hits that pillow, you're sound asleep. You're fast asleep. You're, you're, in, this, you're in this feeling or, or in this sort of world of, man, what a day. That was good. 
I feel good about that. I kept the promises I, I wanted to keep and that I made to myself and others. And damn, that just feels good, right? And so when you're setting that up, it's like, what do you want that to be for yourself and for others around you? Do you wanna be a trustworthy person? Do you wanna have a lot of self-belief in yourself, right? Self-belief and self-esteem in a big way comes from your ability to keep promises to yourself and compound that consistently over time, right? So there's many projects we may work on throughout our lifetime. There's many things that we may be presented over a lifetime that if you've been doing the right things leading up to that point, more often than not doing the right things, I'm not saying you have to be, you know, hit 100% of your goals, that's impossible, right? If we're looking at some of the greatest, uh, you know, score of goals over time, right? We can look at Michael Scott, you know, uh, Wayne Gretzky quote here. You miss 100%. <laughs> right, yeah, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. So as far as like setting this up for yourself, right? It, it's, there are things in our lives that every day pull for our attention, that every day seem like the most attractive thing, right? And that's because there are hundreds, if not thousands of engineers, the brightest minds that live around this world that are engineering these products to do this. They understand our cognitive abilities. They understand what makes us tick and what makes us distracted and what makes us sink into something without much regard for what it's gonna do for the rest of our day or the rest of our week. Right. And so understand and know or think about, right? I just encourage you to think about when your head hits that pillow tonight, what are the promises that you wanted to keep to yourself and others? What were those? Did you get them done? And if you didn't get them done, was it because a life event happened? Was it was cut because one of your children got sick at school or was it that if you check your screen time, you were on TikTok for four hours today? <laughs> because if it's the second one, you're you going to probably be feel- scrolling the PD TikTok <laughs> if that's yeah. hot, you're going to you spend your be time on. on. <laughs> right, you better be on physique development TikTok, if, if anything. But um, you're, gonna, you're not going to feel very good about that is essentially my point, right? There's, there's different things. There's things within our control. There's things that aren't within our control. But when it comes to what we're talking about today, it's, it's the controllables, right? Control the controllables. And one of those controllables is our ability to focus our attention on something that's important to us, or it's important to some us and to those around us, right? Those who trust within trust us and have trust within us, right? And that's, that's the most important thing, I think, when it, when it comes, or one of the most important things when it comes to something like de delayed gratification. And I think with delayed gratification, it's important to not let this sit on an outcome. So for example, when you are going through and, and uh, using Sue as the example, where within her contest prep, she has a, a very definitive goal here to place better than she ever has, as well as uh, turn into an IFBB pro. Now within that, um, let's say that she falls short of the ultimate goal. I don't think that you're going to be I mean, you're going to be upset that you didn't reach the the goal, but at the same time, you have poured absolutely everything into this and and have fallen in love with the work itself and, and will continue to do the work past this time and so on and so forth. Um, and so fall in love with the, the work that you're doing to create that delayed gratification and don't only let it hinge on that outcome being the case. Uh, because you could find yourself in a scenario where you get to a specific time frame that you feel as though that you should receive this delay, delayed gratification that you've been working so hard towards. And the reality is, is that the timing may just not be right and you just need to keep working and putting more time in those different factors and that delayed gratification will come maybe six months or three months or whatever it or is. multiple years. Or years. Um, and so I think that the, the main thing is really ensuring that you're passionate about the thing that you're doing to um, find an environment that you're in love with what you're doing from a day-to-day -day perspective. Yeah. And I was going to talk on this because like I said, of real life doesn't have that guarantee. I could leave every stone unturned and do every single thing perfect for this prep and still someone else beat me. 
And I have to be okay with that. And I am okay with that going into the show, knowing that first, it's a subjective sport. But second, that it's not about just getting that end. It's not about just placing that. It's about what work went into it and those promises that I kept to myself and how I felt each day working towards that. If I fall on my freaking face for this prep, I don't care truthfully because I've learned about myself. I've been able to grow within this prep and I've been able to show up for myself. And like Austin said, when that head hits the pillow, I feel great about the work that I did. And it is a very rewarding feeling in and of itself to just feel that way when I go to bed. Because there was a time in my life where I went to bed every night beating myself up, tearing myself down, so frustrated, irritated, annoyed, upset with how I spent the day, and being able to have my head hit that pillow and just feel good about what I did that day. And this is going to come in and strides and waves. It's not that every day I'm able to reflect on my day perfectly and have no bias and understand when I did enough, when I didn't do enough, when I showed up for myself. But more often than not, I'm able to get to the end of the day and say, Sue, you showed up. You kept your promises and you did what you were supposed to do. And that's honestly enough for me, even if those things don't come to fruition. If I don't get that bigger reward down the, ro- down the road, that is enough reward for me because it goes towards exactly what Austin said, that self-confidence, that self-belief, that self-esteem. And that is what can keep me going and keep pushing me in the right direction instead of going to bed every night feeling so defeated about how I spent my life. Life is something that you only get one of, and it's pretty dang short when you really look at it. And so being in a place where you spend your life full of regret versus you can either have the pain of regret or the pain of discipline. And I'd much rather have that pain of discipline, that pain of working my tail off and going to bed feeling proud than getting in bed every night because I chose the instant time and time again. And a a side piece from this is that, and this is something that the three of us have taken from competing specifically, is that 90% of competitors, if not more than that, are not going to make a living out of competing, probably Mm like 95%. And so there is a a very tangible tool from a life perspective within competing in general, where it's the organization, the diligency, the focus that is required out of you that you can take into your day-to-day life as well as into your work and those different things that I know all three of us have benefited greatly from. And that's what I really, in a lot of our competitors, I encourage all of them to really take these things and understand what they're learning about themselves as well as learning within their day-to-day task um, to improve and apply to their life. Because the bodybuilding itself is only going to reward uh, financially or career-wise for a very small percentage of competitors. So to to go through this and, and to go through the really the challenge of what competing is, you have to have the ability to use the tools and take things from a life perspective rather than it just being like, well, I'm getting up there in a uh, pretty bikini and I'm, I'm tanned up and all these different things and I work so hard for these 30 seconds. It's like, no, 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 you work so hard to improve all those different factors within your life that are enhanced because of this. So um, a little side tangent from our delayed gratification. Yeah. But. but it's really funny that you do say that because we've talked before about how my first time on stage, I thought it was going to be like this shining moment where I was like, this feels like home. And I actually didn't like the stage day itself because it was the work that I really liked. And it's just not in my nature to like just get up there and that to be like what I desire. And you'll be hearing this on Monday, which my show would have been two days ago, but I'm in peak week right now when we're recording this. And people are asking like how excited I am for the show. And I I am excited excited, but truthfully, it's just the work that's gone into it up to this point. Like, yes, I am excited to showcase it and all of that, but I'm kind of like, I feel like I've already accomplished what I set out to do, which is also a really cool feeling. The only thing you deserve is the ability to do the work Mm -hmm. itself, right? You don't deserve an outcome. You don't just like fair is not fair. Like it's just, it's not like regardless of what you want to happen, you have no control over what's going to truly happen in any part of life, right? You can do everything 
perfectly right. And by the end of the day, it's like, man, the chips did not fall in my favor today. Yeah. But you know what? The only, th but if you understand that the only thing you truly have the, 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 the rights to is the work itself, right? The only thing you deserve is the ability to do the work, right? And to me, like this is a very humanistic thing. The thrill of the hunt with no guarantee of a, of a kill, right? Like that goes back as old as time, as far as humans are concerned and, and animals for that matter, mm -hmm. like the thrill of the hunt. And there's absolutely no guarantee that you're even going to see anything or that if you see something, you're going to be able to, to kill it or get your hands on it. Right. But to me, like that is, that's it. That's life. And we get to spend this thrill of the hunt around people that we love and care about us and doing things that we hopefully enjoy somewhat right like that's it to me you know it's like that's a that's a gift that's awesome that's cool right and i i know that there's a lot of things there that to, for a lot of people that you may have to unpack or or to work through and and we've all had to do a lot of those things right for what we think we deserve or what we have what we have the right to or what we think is fair but at the end of the day, the work that you put in is is going to equate to some degree to what you get out of it, right? And that's life. And be be okay with that. Put the work in and understand that whatever happens, happens. But the fact that you wake up again in the morning is another opportunity to to attack it, to go out on the hunt. And that's... If you if you simplify it enough, it, I think it allows you to to completely enjoy, or to enjoy more of what you have the privilege to do day in and day out, right? And that is to show up and to at least go out and start the hunt, regardless of what you're about to see or kill. And I thought it would be helpful just because we we are all humans here. And even though we're going to talk about our mindset and talk about things that we either strategies we use or things that we use for clients or for ourselves when it comes to struggling with this aspect, because I know all we've talked about so far is like, we just get it done and we love it. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about a few strategies, but I thought it would be helpful for us to talk about delayed gratification within our company as a whole when it comes to physique development, because this hasn't been something that has been an overnight, oh, instant gratification, everything all worked out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, very much not been that. It's been eight plus years of extremely hard work to get to this point that some of those things still haven't felt like they've come to the point of getting the gratification for all of the work that's gone into it. So I thought that it would be helpful for us to talk on that, just open those doors a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Um, the one side tangent to what Austin had spoken about, um, the first thought in my mind was that if we were told the score to every sporting event before the game started, how few people would watch, I would just, I would not be interested in sports at all anymore, just for mm -hmm. the sheer fact of like, you already know the outcome. And I think the, the beauty of sports is that literally anything can happen from a victory or loss perspective, but that's a conversation for another day, I suppose. <laughs> um, within the delayed gratification for uh, physique development, gosh, uh, I, I think that it's easy in hindsight for, for Austin and I from the very, very beginning and, and Sue coming on you know, four years ago now, um, from the very beginning to say it was perfect timing for just like all the different phases that we had in terms of Austin and I being in college and it being like the perfect time to start, if you will, where in reality, it really wasn't the the best time to start anything or add anything onto our plate in terms of <laughs> we were uh, insanely busy in terms of like our own training as well as our uh, school and work and all those different things. But it was something that we had a, a lot of belief in as well as something that we were painfully passionate about. And that was the whole root of it. And it allowed for us to not, I mean, I don't even, in hindsight, I don't know when we even started to really care if we were making money from it. It was like, we are just doing this solely because we love this, especially at the beginning of the YouTube channel. We were just doing it because we thought it was awesome. And it was like a, an, an opportunity. And I may have talked about this in other podcasts, but at the time I had just stopped playing baseball. And the only friend that I had really in 
uh, Evansville where I was, even though I'm, I'm from that area, the only person I was really connecting with was Austin. And so it was my first opportunity to make new friends that were interested in the things that I was interested in and those different factors. And so it was such a cool experience to be on YouTube and have fun and, uh, you know, <laughs> make very goofy <laughs> YouTube videos and those different factors. But over time, as we uh, started to make the commitment towards it being our full-time job, which would be... Um, it wasn't until like 2018, because that's when you quit Vitamin yeah. Shop. Um, so it's been you know, four or five years, uh, within that. And so once we made the commitment for, for that route, um, we, we shifted that focus and, and the passion and the efforts into making it a thing, you know, and, and providing for our families and those different factors. And so it's been something that certainly didn't take off right from the jump and has had its ebbs and flows throughout. And, um, it's just, I mean, it's been really cool. Well, yeah, within that, with you guys being in college, you had to delay the instant gratification of partying, oh, of spending course. time with people, all of that, to work for what you got. And then there was a time, and I know we've talked about it on here before as well, where Alex specifically was working um, at Vitamin Shop. He had clients. He was also doing something else crazy. I forget you were... <laughs> uh, you were, oh, you were doing the athletic training, the oh. strength and conditioning and something else. And you're doing all of that. And that was delaying everyone around our age. And I know Austin was also in the same boat and myself when I was around that age. All of my friends were out doing things and having fun, so to speak. And not that I didn't have fun within what I was doing, but I had a choice to make as far as what was going to be worth it. Was it worth it to go and just blow off the work of something that I wanted to happen. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I've always said I wanted to lose weight or I would really like it if my skin would clear up or I would really like X, Y, and Z, but you're not willing to take away that instant gratification of eating that meal or not taking time to wash your face or whatever it may be, that's what we're talking on is you get to choose what that option is day in and day out. And I'm sure Austin has his own examples of that time and even still within our life of we work a lot more than a lot of the people um, that are like near, like live near us currently. And so it is something that we have made that decision of it's worth that because of what we want to get out of it in the long run of delaying that instant gratification. And I, I'll add two things. One is that the the work that we're speaking to, like there can be other ways that you go about delayed gratification yeah. as well. Uh, I just want to clarify that because a lot of the what we're speaking to today has been very work oriented. And I want to make a clarification that there is more to it. Um, but the other thing within delayed gratification is your environment, uh, especially at the beginning. And, and what Sue's speaking to when I was doing crazy, I had, I had two things that I was very focused on. I wanted to like I had a, a business partner in Austin that I cared abundantly about and did not want to, um, you know, not show up for. So that's a very powerful thing to have someone who holds you accountable, whether it be like for Austin and I, especially early, it wasn't a, a verbal accountability. It was more of just like a agreed upon, not spoken, but like you are going to do this and I'm going to do this to show up for you. And then I also had a, a my girlfriend at the time who I very much so wanted to propose to, and I had no money. Thus, I was going to do everything I could to have money, thus to propose, um, realizing that she was going to have this ring on her finger, which I understand the the size of the ring and those diff or the diamond, those things didn't matter. But to me, understanding that I had to, I was buying the ring at what, 22. Mm-hmm. I knew that it was going to be, you know, wearing it for a long time. So I needed to show out <laughs> for myself <laughs> and and finance that uh, at the time. So that was two things for me where I think with delayed gratification, it's very important to have the environment as well as the accountability of those around you that you care most about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yes to everything you guys are, are saying. And it's it's something that when, you, when you're going through it and when you find it, right, when you find and you truly feel the, within you, like the person that you want to be, it doesn't feel like anything other than, well, I'm doing this because this is what I want to do. This is what's pulling me to do everything day in and day out, right? Of course, there are days where you don't want to do the thing that you know you should do, right? And again, this doesn't always have to do with like work, right? Or productivity or whatever, right? That's not what this conversation is about, right? That, like, 
delayed gratification in the form of love and in, in the form of partnership in the term in the form of friendship right like there's so many things that go into a relationship right especially a an intimate one especially a marriage right like there's so much that goes into that as far as a delayed gratification goes right there's so many things that are easier to do or maybe more instantly pleasurable or whatever right like but what do you want out of this right and i think you know i don't have kids but i people that i know that have kids or are now much older and have grandkids it's like and, and something that was kind of reframed it for me was was when a friend or we were talking to um a couple of friends and they were like well, we're, we weren't sure on, you know, we're not sure on kids. We're not sure on the whole process of it. But when we look into the future, when we picture our lives as older individuals, the thing that keeps coming up is being around family in a big one. And it's like, well, if that's the case, that's not just going to happen. You got to do the work. You got to have the kids <laughs> so that those kids can grow up and have kids. Yeah. Right. Like that, that's a ton of work. That's a 20, 30 year process of investment of time to get an outcome in the future where you're sitting there as an older individual and saying, I did it. This is what I always imagined. And that's what you're doing in every part of your life that you want something to happen in, whether that's per personal or professional, you name it, academic. You're, you're making the sacrifices now for something that you want to see in the future, right? And, and I think not getting too fixated on outcomes is, is very, very important because the outcome you have in mind is going to change. It's going to evolve as you evolve and grow and mature as an individual or you mature as a, as a couple or a partnership or, or a, a, a cooperative that is working together for an end goal, right? Like, the first goals that we ever had for campus physique or physique development <laughs> or whatever, like one, we didn't really have any yeah. to begin with, but outside of like, hey, let's make some uh, videos and and get some sell interaction some online. Training programs. And, yeah. yeah, and sell some training programs, right? And like, so we can keep doing it. Like that's that was the big thing is like, how do we set this up in a way where we just get to keep doing this, you know? And then that, so if we, if we took, if we solely based physique development's future off of what we first set as our goal, there would be no physique development. <laughs> like, <laughs> hands down, there would be no company, there would be no anything, right? Or, or it would be totally different. Way right? different, yeah. Way different, right? But what you, what we did and, and what we continue to do is we take it day at a, one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time, one quarter at a time, one year at a time. And you got to consistently you put the work in, right? And work, I'm gonna put in like air quotes here because the work is relative and contextual to the thing you're wanting to, to get done, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, hacking productivity or whatever, dude. It doesn't have to be that. But whatever you're wanting to, to aim your sights at, right? And as long as you are putting that work in day in and day out, you're doing it in a way that you can get a sense of fulfillment out of, and that you feel good at the end of the day when your head hits the pillow, right? And if that's a day in Netflix, dude, crush it. <laughs> watch all this, watch all the Netflix, right? Because yeah. I have, and that's something like I have those days, right? We all have those days where it's like, you know what? For the next six hours, this is what I want to do. This is what I need right now. And this is what's gonna make me feel good. And I, by the end of the day, when my head hits the pillow, I'm going to feel good about this. But if I do that too often, it's a problem. It's a huge problem. Yeah. I'm not going to feel good about it. I'm going to feel terrible about myself. I'm not going to, I'm going to start to reframe my entire self-belief system of what I can accomplish day in and day out or week in and week out or year in and year out, right? And opportunities come through putting effort towards something and ideally the something that you want to turn into another thing or something more into the future right and that's all we're talking about here today 
right? Like put the work in, whatever that looks like for you, and understand that with some direction towards a horizon of where you want to go and where you want to be in the future, there needs to be some early sacrifices made to create that, right? Whether, whether that's a big family when you're old. Like so if you want a big family when you're old, there's a ton of work to be done and you got to start at some point, right? And if you want a company that fulfills you and brings you a lot of enjoyment or you, you know, whatever that looks like for you, you gotta, you gotta make some early sacrifices, right? And there's things that you're not going to be able to, to do, right? And I, I think my last point here is like, I think we all know, you know, and if this is you and, and this hits, sit with it. But I think we all know or, or have known people in our past or within our lives that every every road they go down is the easiest, easiest one, mm-hmm. right? And I think there's a lot there and I'm not qualified to unpack that fully, but what I am qualified to do is speak on how that, how I view that within myself and deeper conversations with these individuals a lot of times, as soon as you start to unpack and unravel that, that ball of yarn, right? It's like, oh, you're not as satisfied as you say you are, you project that you are, right? In your life. And that like, and I think that speaks to something deeper, right? That speaks to something to our core as humans and, and individuals who crave res- responsibility and and importance within our community and, and those two who are around us and love us, right? Um, and and to do that, right? Throughout human history, there's had to be sacrifice. There's had to be a sense of do the hard work now to have something great in the future, and that's that's delayed gratification. Yeah. yeah. And I think that it'll be helpful, like I said, to wrap up with just strategies that we use ourselves or we use with clients. And I know for myself, honestly, quotes really help me. I know that it might sound cheesy, but once a quote hits, I feel like it really hits for me. And it's so helpful to repeat that quote, have it written down, whether it's on my computer so I see it every day or I have a whiteboard in front of my computer. So I'll write down quotes on that that are really going to help me move the needle forward and so I have a bunch of different quotes that fit different areas of my life, but it's one that within this, it's choose your heart. And so exactly what Austin was saying of those people that always take the easiest route, you can choose the hard of going against the easiest route, um, or you can choose the hard of you always go the easiest route and then you end up with a life that you don't like, or you end up in a health situation that you don't like because you're always choosing the easiest thing for food, or you're always choosing anything that doesn't require discipline from you or anything that doesn't require any type of like struggle from you. And if you don't struggle any of your life, when are you going to, you need to stress your body for training wise, you need to stress your body to see it change. It's the same thing with your mind and it's the same thing with life. You need to stress it to see that change. And so being able to choose your heart is something really powerful to me. Uh, Hey, I can choose the heart of doing this thing that I don't wanna do right this second Or I can do the opposite and choose the easy thing, but down the road, that's going to be a different hard for me. Um, And then something else is kind of, again, asking yourself some questions of like that first question of, are you willing to exchange short-term comfort for long-term function? Because when you phrase it like that, it seems like a no-duh kind of moment. Of course, I want long-term function. Of course, I want long-term happiness. But time and time again, you're choosing that short-term comfort. So that's a very important question to truly ask and answer honestly for yourself, as well as asking, do you even have faith in your abilities that you can make this happen? Why do you keep taking the instant gratification? Because you don't have faith that that your hard work is going to do anything. Um, It's also something that I heard the quote once, it was actually in Evansville at one of the gyms that we used to go to. It said, um, using the example of like, oh, it's going to take too long. 
the time is going to pass anyways. So why not be where I want to be instead of keep thinking, oh, it's going to take me a few years. The time's going to pass. So why don't I just go ahead and do it? So when the time does pass, I can feel better about what's been accomplished um, and being able to get there. And then the two last things I'll personally mention is I know I work best off of challenges. And so I'll challenge myself of, okay, you have to do this every day for seven days and like either mark it off a calendar or be able to put it on your to-do list and check it off. Or for example, like yoga was a huge thing I wanted to implement into my daily routine. And I used accountability within Alex of in our weekly check-ins. When I check in, I have to say if I've done my yoga and I really didn't want to have to erase in my check-in that I didn't do it. And so that was a challenge that I made for myself. And that was really helpful for me. Um, And then another thing that you can do is to get your reps in is to promise something small to yourself and then deliver. Just like we talked about with keeping promises, make a smaller, realistic promise to yourself, keep it, then savor that feeling. And next time you're about to do something, make another promise to yourself and keep it. And that will start the trajectory and get things rolling to get you to that point where you're able to understand why gratification doesn't always need to be delayed, but why it's helpful to delay it in multiple instances. Yeah. um, The one tactic that I'll speak very heavily on that I use within myself and clients, I am Mr. Distraction, uh, point blank. Mm -hmm. There's just very, very easily distracted at all times. And so things that I personally have to do, I have to limit myself very abundantly um, when I'm wanting to get into a state of a very uh, focus uh, or very good focus or, you know, pushing towards a delayed gratification of a goal of some sort. So in my work environment, this is the easy one for me to to speak to is that on my computer I have a a one tab rule on each screen so I have two screens pulled up there's only one tab on each if I have multiple tabs I know that I'll get a little curious and want to pop over to see what's going on on this one as if there's going to be any change than when I just checked it five minutes ago. So we're going to exit out of the other tabs, just two tabs. And so then from there, I also need a little bit of uh, sound because the uh, silence is going to allow for my mind to wander or my eyes to wander off of what I need to be focusing on. So some lo-fi beats is a very important piece for me. Um, And so then from there, I have a timer. And so I have a, a time allotment in which I'm going to be focusing on this singular task. And I'm not going to veer from this. I'm not going to check my phone. I'm not going to check Instagram, any of those different things. And so that is the, I know that sounds kind of like rigid, which it very much so is, but I have to have that, especially with the the busyness of my schedule and those different factors uh, to allow for myself to be very focused. So that is one tool that I utilize. And I know that for many individuals, you may be uh, Mr. or Mrs. Distracted as well. And so that may be a useful tool for you at work when you're on your computer and you have a very like specific task to get done, you have this time frame. Um, giving yourself a start and end date has been very helpful for me. Um, so that would be the main tactic that I speak to. And I do the same thing within my training as well. I set a timer for how long I believe the training to be. I turn off my notifications, all those different factors, have music playing, and I go after it. And so it really applies to everything. Yeah, I think peace of mind for me is a, is a big one, right? And <clears throat> when I speak of peace of mind and knowing that, you know, and this, this falls into timers, right? This falls into, uh, keeping yourself within a, a, within a constraint, right? Whether that's, you know, you could constraints, you know, food, food environments, hiding foods that you constantly can just reach and grab or see, putting them in a drawer, putting them in, in a non-trans, non-transparent container and stowing them away to making it, there's more friction to get to that distraction or, whatever that thing is for you. A harder barrier of entry. A harder barrier of entry, right? Create friction. And I think creating friction within, whether that's your goals within um, dieting, within your fitness and health, or you know, just feeling better day in and day out from a sense of like doing the things you want to do and, and keeping the promises you you make to yourself, right? And I think we use these all the time. Like, So for me, when I talked about peace of mind, it's you know, I set an alarm to get up in the morning. When I go to sleep, I usually set two alarms. So I have peace of mind of like, well, one of these is going to go off. <laughs> and I can fall asleep with that. We've all fa- tried to fall asleep with no alarm set, knowing that we have to get up at a certain time. How easy was it for you to go to sleep? 
probably not the easiest <laughs> for you to fall into a deep, relaxing sleep, right? Because you're like, well, am I going to wake up? Or you wake up every 30 minutes. You're like, oh, is it is it 530 <laughs> yet? Like, you know, and it's like, no, it's 1230. Relax. You just fell asleep at 12. Like, go to sleep. Um, and so peace of mind is a big thing, right? And so when Alex talks about timers, like with work and stuff, like, you know, I don't use as strict of a constraint as Alex does within timers, but I do set, you know, I just go to timer countdown on Google, set a time that I think this task is going to take me. And that way I have peace of mind or when I have an appointment coming up and it's like, okay, I'm going to set a timer to where this timer goes off five minutes before this appointment where I need to change task and do the thing I need to do next, I have the peace of mind to sink myself fully into that task, knowing that this external tool is gonna pull me out of it at the right time, right? Which allows me to fully sink into to what I'm doing, right? And I think creating boundaries, and the whole, I think all of us kind of talking about these things is like creating boundaries or constraints to allow ourselves to be who we want to be in that moment without the need to feel distracted or pulled away from it due to time or, or to something else that, that may be pulling on our mind, right? Because if we can constraint, if we can add constraint to those things and compartmentalize those things, the more we're gonna help ourselves do it. And again, that goes for training, that being on a training program, right? The Physique Development Training Club. There you go. <laughs> uh, but being on a training program allows you that, that constraint of knowing when you step into the gym, you have, as long as you're doing those reps and those sets and you're following the exercise selection that, that you, is on your program, you're going to be working towards your goal. And that is a good feeling. Every time you go into the gym and you have a program to follow that is set up to get you to where you want to go, that's a good feeling, right? And there's a peace of mind to that. Well, as long as I show up and do the work, I'm going to be working towards where I want to be in the future, right? And the same thing goes with nutrition, having a plan with nutrition, the same thing goes with work, the same thing goes with relationships, the same thing goes with a lot of things, right? And the last thing I'll mention here is, I, I talk about the feeling as well. Identify with the feeling. And there's nothing I crave more than that feeling that I get when I kept my promise. Yeah. Or when I did the thing I said I was going to do and I delivered it on time or before the due date, right? Or maybe a couple hours after. <laughs> but I but I kept it, right? Yeah. That's the big thing is I kept the promise and I didn't have excuses for why I didn't get it done. Sometimes things come up. But if you want to have that feeling, and I promise you it's worth the pursuit of it, the first day that you were on point with your training, your nutrition, and all the things you wanted to get done that day or that were obviously within re a realistic scope of what you could get done that day, there's that feeling you get at the end of the day, again, when your head hits that pillow. That's the one I chase. If, there's, if I chase anything, it's that feeling of, I kept it, I kept the promises, and I did it, and damn, this feels good. And it builds momentum. Yeah. And as much yeah. as a certain sports reporter wants to think momentum isn't real, momentum is extremely real within sports and within life. And it's extremely difficult when you feel like that's bottomed out every single day. And I speak this from a place of knowing. I mean, Sue six, seven, eight years ago was the person that I'm speaking to right now of I used to go to bed each night with zero momentum going into the next day feeling defeated, beat down and frustrated. And I can tell you, I could have none of the things I have as far as materialistic things and still feel so much better mentally and with myself alone because you're the person you have to spend the most time with, knowing that I accomplished the things that I set out, knowing that I saved the, or kept those promises and knowing that I'm building momentum towards something bigger and better. And that's exactly what we're all touching on here and exactly what it's all about. And we even talked about it a few episodes ago and what we learned of posting on social media. We had to have the delayed gratification of we're posting every day, every day, and not getting everything back that we thought we deserved. And exactly what Austin said, we didn't deserve anything except the ability to work towards what we wanted to. And so building that momentum, building that 
self-belief, building that trust all goes to you becoming the person that you want to be. Because I'm pretty sure none of you guys are listening to this saying, I want to trust myself less. I want to believe in myself less and I want to accomplish less. And if you are, you're listening to the wrong podcast and you're following the wrong people. But truthfully, none of you guys are wanting that. So what do you need to do to have the opposite of that? Oh, I need to keep showing up for myself and keep doing what I need to be doing because that feeling at the end of the day, and that's another strategy. You can journal. How do I feel when I don't accomplish these things versus when I do accomplish these things or keep these promises to myself and checking in with yourself of, oh, I felt really crappy when this happened versus I felt really successful and rewarded and felt great about myself when my head hit the pillow because of this. And I want that to happen again tomorrow. Yeah. And and momentum goes both ways. It can be in the positive manner that we're speaking to, but it also can go in the negative manner where you have one day that's really crappy and then you try to resist and and you continue to fall into the the traps of um, uh, immediate gratification, those different factors. And so now the the slope for the negative is much faster moving, in my opinion, than the slope that is um, going in a positive direction. Uh, It's a, it's a slower turn with that, that positive momentum, but much more worth it and, and kind of falls into the delayed delayed gratification um, that we're speaking to. And I will also add for those who are in the investing world and have an investment portfolio, if that's part of your (laughs) life right now, this is a challenging time. This is a challenging time. This is a time where the immediate gratification would be to pull every dollar out and um, let the, let the, the ship sink by itself. But you have to have the delayed gratification and sink with the ship and pray to God it comes back up. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yeah. Just I see it and I'm like, okay, well, tomorrow will be better. I see tomorrow. Tomorrow will be better. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days. I think examples are a big thing, right? So obviously with investment, right? Examples tell us in the past, those who pulled their money out lost what they pulled out. Like they lost that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. They had to, they ended up sinking with the ship. They hit the iceberg with everyone else and sunk with the ship. Right. But those that s- stood the test of time and trusted, had some trust in the process, right? Because of what the past has told us, they got in the lifeboats, they're onward with the rest of their life. And they probably made some money out of it, right. or yeah. at least got all their money back. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, whether you're in the investing world or whatever, like, that's the big thing, I think, with, trying to to utilize what we know of the past right and those who showed up for themselves and kept the promises they made for themselves either did very successful things on a grand scale or very successful things on a small scale right to those who they love and their families and they they're the people that we we remember as what a great person they kept all their promises they loved they loved really deeply and hard, and I could always depend on them, right? And you don't have to be this grand scale figure, right? That's not what we're even discussing. It's it's use the examples of the past to allow yourself to, to work towards the future that you want, right? And, and we know through ex- a ton of examples, and as a society, we really love to, to nitpick and pull apart successful people of the past and try to extrapolate all the things they did right and all the things they did wrong. <laughs> it's that we have examples of people who who did those things, did all the things we talked about today, right? And they can't they they went on to be whatever version of successful they they either wanted to be or what they could become. Right? And I think that's an important important lesson as well is use that example of of the past, right? You're not we're not starting from scratch here. Right? And that's a very fortunate thing. We have all the like all these books right like all of this is filled with knowledge that i otherwise would have had to learn myself over lifetimes right but we have sort of a cheat code that we learned how to how to make this happen and our body's designed to to mem- to have memory and to be able to pull on these examples that are written in these texts right or the videos we watch or, or the lessons we learn or the podcasts we listen to yeah. right and use that example for your benefit all these tools are there for your benefit right and so we have a leg up so why not use it yeah 
And I'd love to hear if you guys are watching this on YouTube right now, just being able to comment below of something that you either learned or being able to talk about a time that you delayed gratification, that it really helped you, or really anything from this podcast that you took away because we want this podcast to be one that helps you, that spreads information, and knowing what you took away from it is extremely helpful for, for us, and we'd love just to converse with you as well. So thank you guys so much for listening and or watching. We cannot wait to see you in the next one and we'll catch you on the flippity flip be sure to like share and subscribe <laughs> <laughs>